Hello everybody and big welcome to CDH Television here with a continuous card review for this set. This is part 3 of Dominaria United. The entire set has been released so we're gonna go over all of the remaining cards. So we left off down here at August 23 so we have a long way upward to go. Now I haven't actually looked at the new cards yet, but I still believe that this Keldon Flame Sage is gonna be probably the best card in the set. I think it's uh, absolutely amazing, but we will see, maybe we find something that is uh, more bonkers. Also I was apparently wrong in part 2 about Sarah Paragon, apparently it worked a little bit different because there was a typo in here. So you're allowed to either play a land card from the graveyard or cast a CMC free spell or less. But here it says that you can do two, both of them. Still, I think this is a pretty amazing card and I'm happy to see it's getting print. White needs this. But let's carry on and, well, first up here we have two uncommon commanders, but let's actually jump to this one. The Meira School of Antiquit. I absolutely love this creature. Legendary Elf Artificer, I've been... Uh, I really think green legendary creatures with artifact strategies are pretty cool because it's very rare and unique. Now this is very similar to Ursa. Tap an untapped non-token artifact you control, add a green mana to your mana pool. It's really sad it is not tokens included here as well because then all of your food, clues and treasures could get really cool. But I think they have figured out that Ursa was a little bit too good and they tried to balance it. Still though, Tapping an artifact for a green mana, that is great. That is really good. And for only 3 mana, you get this into play quite early. Now the second ability is where this just takes off. Tap 2 untapped non-token artifacts you control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. The great part here is that that isn't that expensive. Now the difference between this and Urza is that you actually have to pay mana for it. But this is green we're talking about, so the mana here shouldn't be a problem. So as a short answer, this card is great. I think it's absolutely amazing and I'm gonna make a deck with this. Definitely a deck tech video. Probably play it in some of my CDH gameplay videos as well. The combos isn't that complicated. You go for various gruel strategies. You've seen them before. I think Conspicuous Snoop will be a great combo inside this because you don't need to shuffle with Ursa. For example, we have Ursa down here. You need to shuffle. So you can't top deck manipulate with this ability. But with this ability, you don't need to shuffle, so you can Worldly Tutor or Goblin Recruiter actually, and you can manipulate your top of your deck, and then you can just use this to dig through that. I like it. And Conspicuous Snoop Strategies isn't really demanding that much mana, so I, I really think this could work out pretty fine. Otherwise, you have other prob possible combos. You have Birthing Pod with Kiki Jiki. Now, well, we're not really on white, which is required for making Kiki Jiki work with Birthing Pod, but there are solutions there as well. In any case, like, Gruul with Kardra will figure things out. There are other potential combos as well. You could create an Underworld Breach strategy here as well, but more of that in the future. Tech Tech video of this coming up. All I'm gonna say right now, it's great. Let's jump back to these new legendary uncommon commanders. So, white, black, 2-2, two, two, death touch. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under you gain one life. Whenever another creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life. So this is a, what's it called, sack or death outlet. If you're able to loop a creature of dying and all that stuff, you have infinite damage or infinite loss of life. Similar to Blood Artist, it's a Blood Artist potential replacer. Therefore, it's CDH viable. Better than Blood Artist, it's a 2-2 death touch. Great blocker. Sometimes you need blockers. And just by having a 1-1 with death touch, that's amazing. So I, I think this will see some play. I like it. It's clean and simple. It's perfect for those Rasa Cats combos in the right color. And it's also great to just gain a little bit of casual life here and there when creatures enter the battlefield for you. So it works out. Not great, but yeah, you know, combo piece. You need stuff like this. Then we have the other cool thing. Blue, black, one, two, draw a card and discard a card. If you discard an instant or sorcery card this way, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. Cute. Yeah. It's good to make your opponents lose a little bit of life then, uh, but there's nothing really CDH care about in general. Drawing cards and discarding cards, that's fine though, that's something we do like. You can sacrifice this for 2 mana, and cast target insult sorcery card from your graveyard this turn. If that spell will be put into a graveyard, exile it instead, activate only as sorcery. I kinda like it. 
You can cast it the same turn and sacrifice it the same turn because it's not demanding to tap. But you might have to pay the mana for the spell that you're casting from the graveyard though. But still, this is this is overall good. It's a very budget-friendly card too. It's not the best card in the world. I don't think it's gonna see that amount, amount of play just because I don't see a deck that it needs this. But I could definitely see decks that could include it just because it's overall fine. It's not over the top, but it's doing a good thing for CDH decks and CDH decks want effects like this. But I think it's a little bit too much mana. And I do think we have better options, but there's nothing wrong with it. Phyrexian Missionary. I like it, but it's really bad. Uh, kicker, very expensive. Return target creature from a graveyard to your hand. Lifelink Tooth. No, it's bad, but cool thing. White Phyrexian card. Rakdos, Force Seams, Garna, Blood Fist of Keld, Human Berserker. Whenever another creature you control dies, draw a card. If it was attacking, otherwise, Garna, the Blood Fist, these damage by each opponent. Well, people will just not block you. Or, well, eventually people will block you, but here is card drain. Rakdos, draw a card. And that's good, but they have to die if it was attacking. Hey, wait a minute, it doesn't actually have to be blocked. You can just attack with everything you have. The things that survive, you just sacrifice them. Hmm. Another good thing about this is that so you have a really strong card draw in the command zone. This is actually a very consistent card draw. You can easily have strange black creatures that are just recurrable, like Blood Gas will be great in here. You sit there and attack with Blood Gas and sacrifice Blood Gas and get it back by dropping lands. So you dig through your deck, eventually find a way to loop a creature infinitely. And you have infinite damage. Yeah, I like it. It's uh, replacing the blood artist uh, purpose. Or it's actually, to be more exact, it is replacing this creature's purpose. They're doing literally the same thing. So honestly, it works. It could be built. And I think I think it's gonna work pretty fine. On top of my mind, I can think of a bunch of black and red creatures that reoccur continuously for more cards that are very cheap. Like blood gas will be out to include the best card inside this deck and things like Bloodgast. The problem I have is the interaction part for this deck. I'm sure you could, I guess, play a bunch of these uh, very strange, uh, what are they called? The hand attack features that comes into play and force people to discard cards and things like that. That could, that could help out a bit, but yeah, this should work. I don't think it's over the top. I don't think it's busted. I think it will be a fair or high powered commander. More colors than would be busted. If you would add something like green or white or well, any color, just three colors and drop the CMC to just three, this would be a lot better. Then it would be really good. Four CMC is a little bit too much, I think. And only two colors is a little bit too few, but it works. What is this? At the beginning of your end step, you create control a creature with power greater than its base power. Nah, token generation in CDH is not that desired. Hey, this is actually good. Vodilian Hexcatcher. Other merfolks you control get plus one plus one. Sacrifice a merfolk. Counter target non creature spell unless it controls pays one. If this was legendary, it could have been uh, a commander. It's very good for merfolk tribal. Like, this is an effect CDH would desire. Imagine a deck that is just producing a mass amount of merfolks. Mono blue, you can have a lot of card draw in mono blue. And then you just sit there and control the entire board state with various sacrificing your token and you can just gridlock the entire board state. I like it. Have to have it inside a 99, but it should work out. I don't see a Merfolk tribal deck though in CDH, so I don't actually see a world where someone would play this, but the effect is there. The effect is actually good. Elf tribal, however, is a thing. Other elves you control get plus one plus one, that's cute, but however, whenever you cast an elf spell, you may pay green if you do draw a card. That's great. There are lots of elves running around in various CDH decks, and you could definitely make an elf tribal kinda CDH deck or sorts. And yeah, just paying one extra mana to draw a card is pretty fine. I think this is gonna be super expensive though, because I think this is gonna be played in Legacy. I don't actually play Legacy, but I know that Legacy elf is a thing. And yeah, this, this should be a thing in elf Legacy. But it works out. It's a card that you could absolutely include in a say, CDH deck that is including a lot of elves. And it's easy to include more elves if you would like. Nael, domain. When Nael deals combat damage to a player, look at the top X cards of your library. X is the number of basic land types among lands you 
control, put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest in the bottom of your library and in order. Then if there are five basic land types among lands you control, draw a card. So you have to have this inside a five color deck. Achieving this domain condition a five color deck is super easy because dual lands and shock lands will count for both. So you need to have three lands in play to achieve the domain. So that's auto achieved. So whenever you connect with this, you like to look at the top five cards and put one of them into your hand. Honestly, that's pretty good. That is actually pretty decent. It's not over the top. I think there are also better card draw engines for CDH, but it's flying. So it will fly over things. It has evasion. You achieving this and just attacking is going to happen every time you get there. But it's only one card per turn. You get to choose among five though. So that's very good. I could see this seeing some play in a creature heavy stacks deck that is on five colors. I can think of one. I've already made a deck tech of it. We're going to look at that card pretty soon. And uh, you could include that in that Yoda deck potentially. Rivers of the Claw. Menace. A free free. Tap. Add to mana and then combinations of colors. And this mana only to cast a dragon creature spell. So there suddenly it got bad. Because dragons isn't like a CDH thing. Once during each of your turns, you may cast a dragon creature spell from your graveyard. That's good. If this was something different, different creature type, it would be better. When you cast a dragon creature spell from your grave, it gains when the creature dies. Exile it now, it got sad. But hey, it's actually pretty, like, probably casual good. But CDH, no. Dragons are just... Tatiova! Steward of Tides! Very low CMC cost, I like that, that's what she needs. Land creature you control have flying, okay. Whenever land ends, the bad thing under control. If you control seven or more lands, up to one target land you control becomes a free free elemental creature with haste, it's still a land. It's bad. Making your lands into creatures and going to beat town is not really a CDH thing. And here we have him, Yoda, the unifier, next card to look at. So, he is amazing. I've actually played a game with him already and I've already made a deck tech video about him as well. So more details of that in the description below of the video or click that thing up there. So legend creatures you control get plus x plus x where x is the number of legend creatures you control. So he has an overrun ability. So normally inside CDH overrun and just creature beats isn't really a thing. However, just having like three legendaries in play, which is super easy. You you mean you have one of them here. They all get plus three plus three. And it just grows so fast when you get more legendaries in play. And this guy gets more legendaries in play because whenever you cast a legendary spell from your hand, exile cards from the top of your library unless you exile. But that seems incorrect. This is has to be a typo again. Okay, so fun fact here. Un unless is not correct what is actually right is until you exile a legend i need to read these guys properly maybe i'm making more incorrect card review here for you just because that there, there are typos in these so i might be wrong on some cards here and there apparently more than i've been uh, so far but again in any case until you exile a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value you you may cast that card without paying its mana cost, so that's basically Cascade, except it's Cascade with Legendaries only for Legendaries. I think they could have wrote, written something like Cascade Legendary and just example this for future, that would be good. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. So he fetches Legendary. You can have a mass Legendary Tribal in your deck, and you're gonna put a lot of Legendaries into play, and suddenly they become an enormous army. So you play a bunch of stacks Legendary cards, that are locking down the game and then you go to beat street and you punch people out of the game and it's gonna work he has card draw in his ability of cascade he can play great creatures because we've gotten a lot of really great stacks creatures that are legendaries and he has a wing con now sure it's a beat down wing con but the amount of plus one plus one power capability is gonna give it's gonna work out and this is definitely a commander that could play this thing because this is card draw value something i talked about in that video Regardless, you have other options as well. One card I really like for Yoda that I talked about in the video is way down. Yeah, you can have this one, for example. That has a card or option. It has lifelink. Like, this is a good con on its own. And, and well, yeah, by the way, this with Yoda, she becomes enormous. Because, like, Yoda will give her something like plus four, plus four. And becomes a seven, seven lifelink. So you can draw a lot of cards with her. Like, one mana could draw a card. It's good. 
Where is the card I'm thinking of? You probably know what I'm talking about. Here's the one. Shanid Sleeper's Scourge. Great card for Yoda because you have Legendary Cascade. So you cast a Legendary, you draw a card from this. You cascade into a Legendary and you cast that one as well. And you draw a second card with this. So that, that's amazing. Cast a Legendary spell, draw two cards, lose two life and cast, find another random Legendary. So that, that's great. It's really digging. So I think he's absolutely great and uh, should see some uh, play inside CDH decks here and there. Then we have Vesuvan Duplimancy. Enchantment. This is basically Orbar, except it's an enchantment. When you cast a spell that targets only a single artifact or creature you control, not lands, though Orbar can make more island. Here's the tokens, a copy of that are. Here's another typo, by the way. That should be that, but whatever. They are humans, they can make errors. Except it's not a legendary. So you can duplicate your commander here. I. I kind of like it, but I find it pretty gimmicky. I find Orver to be pretty gimmicky. However, Orver is the commander, so you can build your entire, entire deck around it, including a bunch of cards in your 99 to, that's going to target your own stuff, and then including a card that's going to synergize with that is a little bit strange. But this is going to see some play because this is basically Orver. So you can have a secondary Orver in the 99 for Orver. Because Orver has built his entire deck around that thing. If this was ability, it would synergize better because then your commander with an activated target ability could utilize this to duplicate more things. I think that would be broken because then Kenrith could sit there and put plus one plus one counters on various creatures and duplicate those creatures. Like this Dockside and Kenrith would go infinite. Kenrith would be able to utilize it this way, which he can't, and that's good. In any case, I like it. Whenever, but wait, wait a minute. When we cast a spell that targets only a single target artifact you control, a bounce spells actually work. When I, when I think about it, huh? Bounce spells. You can sit and bounce your creatures, duplicate your creatures. I kind of like that, but still, it's very gimmicky. Like it's it's gonna be like, what are you achieving here? More value, more good. That's true, but like you have a spell seeker in play. You find a bound spell with the spell seeker. You cast the bound spell on the spell seeker, and you turn. Wait a minute. Can we make a combo here? I mean, this card. Wait. So you have this in play. You have a. You you cast spell seeker. You find a snap. Because snap is free to cast. You cast snap. You untap your two lands. You target spell seeker. You make a copy of spell seeker, and spell seeker goes back to your hand. Copy spell seeker finds something that returns snap from graveyard to hand. Reap can do that. That's two CMC green. You can return more than that. You recast Spell Seeker. You need to find mana here. It's not gonna, really gonna work. This is gonna be mana intensive. Okay, so I think we can actually figure out a combo here. I'm not gonna do that now, but I can see. Probably need red. Dockside, you would need to. You can find Dockside with various green tutors, though, that Spell Seeker can find. Like, you can find World Tutor. It should be better, though. Maybe you should find. If you have white, you can play Aldamir, Eldermere's Call. That's two mana to put Dockside into your hand. So four mana, get that Dockside. And if you find another bounce spell with the second spell seeker it comes from hand, you can bounce Dockside and make a copy of Dockside. Okay, maybe I actually like it. So if you play a deck that contains an enormous amount of bounce spells and spot removal, because you can, for example, you can cast um, a destroy target creature, a braid, on your dock side and you create a token of dock side. That works, right? Whenever you cast a spell that targets only a single artifact creature you control, you get a token. Yeah, and you can even target the token. So if you have a token of dock side, you cast a secondary destruction spell, like a lightning bolt on that creature, you create a new dock side again. Because it doesn't say non-token here. Wait, okay, let's actually read real card. Whenever you cast a spell that targets only a single artifact creature you control, you create a token. Yeah, there is no typo here. So this is actually exactly how it works. Nice, I didn't uh, lie to you guys, but there are potential typos. Yeah, maybe it actually works when I think about it. Huh. I could see a deck that does this. Like Dockside, Spellseeker, Eternal Witness. Um, there are more cards. We have some uh, Tribute Mage that you maybe could include as well. Probably play Frasius as the commander because Frasius and Dockside could make some infinite mana here. And that's usually going to be your game plan. And then the Bound Spells, Blue has a ton of them. Blink of an Eye, Snap, Into the R Royal, I think it's called. Uh, I was just about to say Psycrift, but you can't actually do this with Psycrift. And then you just value Combo Tutor. Yeah, it should work. Recruit of the Guard. Imperial Recruiter. Yeah, I like it. Should, should be a deck that could actually make this into something really amazing.
So this is gonna make a boost of power. So sacrifice another creature, put a plus one counter on each creature you control. That is very bad because this is just an over an ability and nothing else. For example, if you compare that to Yoda the Unifier, this is over an ability and Cascade Legendaries, so he has more. If we remove the Cascade Legendaries, he would be trash, like this guy, that only has Overrun, so he is bad. Ooh, we have a Merfolk Tribal guy here, and we did look at a cool Merfolk Tribal card. You will look at the top card of your library any time you cast Merfolk spells from the top of your library. So Minaria really feels down to the original magic style with Tribal. You have Tribal Goblins, you have Tribal Merfolk, Tribal Elves, and whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, you may pay one if you do. With a blue 1-1 one, one merfolk creature token, so this is perfect what we looked at previously. So it could sacrifice the merfolks to counter spells. Yeah, I like it. It is it is doing the right thing. However, merfolk spells in CDH are just very bad. They are none you really want to play. Casual, it will be strong and quite oppressive and probably quite annoying. In CDH, it will just not really. But it is card draw. I mean, if you play a really high amount of merfolks, this will dig through your deck quite efficiently, so I like it. Uh, not not CDH, probably high power. Very gonna be a very efficient deck, very annoying deck, and quite oppressive deck. Swarmy deck, and uh, if you get that creature that counter spells, you will be menace. Activated sleeper. So lore wise, those that don't know about sleepers, Phyrexian creator creating infiltrators that look like normal people without the Phyrexian augmentations. And they are like a sleeper agent that eventually activates and uh, start to harass and sabotage. There's a lot of really cool lore about that. You may act have activated sleeper agent enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature card in a grave that was put there from the battlefield this turn, except it's a Phyrexian agent with others type. This is absolutely amazing. This is great. And I, let me show you why. So fun fact, the card it's gonna replace is actually down there here. Doc uh, body double. So the body double is a 5 CMC that comes into play from a Protein Hulk trigger and becomes a copy of Protein Hulk. However, activated sleeper can do the same thing. It can come into play as a copy of Protein Hulk, but only for a free CMC, which means that the Protein Hulk uh, piles can be improved. Now, Protein Hulk is pretty much gone from the CDH universe, but it still actually sticks around because there are still decks that could utilize it in some cool ways. I actually made a video about Protein Hulk and I mentioned Body Double inside that video. And now you can just replace Body Double completely with Activated Sleeper. And that's great. It, it, it improves the Protein Hulk combo. I think Activated Sleeper could do some more tricks that I just don't see right now. I'm very used to seeing Protein Hulk strategies and Protein Hulk combo packages. So this just clicks instead to my mind uh, but in the case activated sleeper should work it should be a card i there have to be more combos that could utilize it in various ways that don't run proton hulk but i can't think of them right now but in the case it's great you can even copy something like an opponent wait was it does it have to from the bad of it so you can't steal something that someone entombs it would be very cool if someone would like entomb rasakef and then you activate a sleeper agent's clone that rasakef in any case moving on Oh, what is this? <laughs> These names. <laughs> okay, here we go. Pronounce pronunciations. Ross Match. <laughs> Hair of Rograk. So we have a legacy going on here. <laughs> They're all weird. They're all weird. Cobalts are gonna become a thing again. I love that. Look at that ear. It's so cute. It's like a rat goblin or something. It's so weird. Okay, Rosh... Nah, no, I'm not gonna... I'm gonna give it. Rograk was easy. Rosh... Nah, Ros, Rosh... Nah. Okay, stop. Battle cry. When this creature attacks, each other attacking creature get plus one plus zero until in turn. That's great because kobolds are overrunning. Heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets this thing, create a kobold creature token named the kobolds of care keep. No, it's bad. Rograk was good because it had partner and you could have a... Wait, this is actually costing mana. Huh, Rograk was free to cast, you weird creature. Kobolds should be free to cast. I can see why this costs mana, because it has battle cry, so it's not entirely useless. <laughs> Rograk was basically free to cast useless full identity and a free creature for no from the command zone. And that's why it was great. This is 
not that great. It's cute though, and we like the legacy. Bad creature tokens with nothing. Talked about creature tokens with nothing before. Protection from Planeswalkers and from Wizards. And it's also creature token of the mana rig. When we cast a multicolor spell, create a, a power stone token. Huh? It's an artifact with tap, add colors. This mana can't be spent to cast non artifact spells. Huh? Wait, this is it's very much anti synergy here. Whenever you cast a multicolor spell, create a tap power stone token that can only be used for artifacts. Now, there are artifacts that are multicolored. Not that many, though, and definitely not CEDH. But that would work out, I guess, except that this mana is colorless, so maybe it doesn't really work for those multicolor artifacts anyways. So, but then you can pay XXX, so basically a minimum of three mana. Tap this, look at the top X card of your library, put two of them into your hand, and there is in bottom library in random order. If this is... Uh, the, you, I mean, the second ability is fine for its own. I don't like it. Uh, I don't see how CDH is going to include this. I don't see a deck that runs... Okay, sure, there are decks that runs an enormous amount of art artifact. We already looked at one of them, but I don't know if she... She would probably be able to utilize that thing, but she doesn't need the artifact. Like, she doesn't really need this mana rig. And I don't think Ursa needs it either. Ursa can't create Power Stone tokens from this. Maybe Ursa needs it when I think about me. It's like, yeah, maybe... Ah, very hard card to place. Ursa might include it, the Elf Artificer might include it, but I can see a world where they don't include it. Okay, this one is actually pretty amazing. So we already looked at the Defiler thing. The Defiler thing is that you can reduce color pips by paying life, basically converting one of these colored mana into Phyrexian mana. Looks like Phyrexia is attacking Dominaria. I haven't seen that before ever in history. They always attack. Whenever you cast a red permanent spell, Defiler of Instinct, deals on I'm always so close to say insect but the filer of instinct deals one damage to any target that's great so there are red decks that are on a storm strategy they're usually not on permanent storm strategy they are on instant sorcery spell slinging and this is only reducing the costing cost of permanent spells and I have already looked at the green one which I think might be the best one because green are including a lot of green permanent cards that they want to storm with. Where is it? Here it is, here, Defiler of Vigor. However, Defiler of Vigor's ability, whenever you cast a green spell, put a person on each creature you control, that's also like overrun, it's fine, it's, it's, it's not great, it's not something CDH desires, but if you end up in a long game, that will be great and like finish the game. Sometimes you just need to punch people out of the game because they have stacks, pieces in play you can't deal with because you don't have the spot removal, but player removal always work. This one, however, the red one, is containing interaction. You can sit and ping creatures. You can sit and deal damage a little bit here and there. So I actually do like it. I don't see a deck at the moment that would include this, but I do like it. It's something a CDH deck could include if that CDH deck it exists, a stormy CDH deck heavily on red that need to reduce the casting cost. Yeah, I could see it. Relic of Legends, add one mana of any color. Tap an untapped legendary creature you control, add one mana of any color. This is amazing. It is basically, uh, what's her name? Uh, Isika, God of the Tree on an artifact. Tap an untapped legendary creature you control, add one mana of any color. It goes past haste as well. I like it. Ezekiel God of the Tree has been really good, I've noticed, in my CC deck, and she's been great inside Yoda as well. Played again with him, had Ezekiel in there, and she turned out great. So I think this Relic of Legends should work too. Like, if, that, if those... And here's a good example of where the deck existence makes a card good. Because if that legendary, mass legendary deck didn't exist, this would be very bad and useless because like legendary tribal in CDH is not really a thing except it is with CC and Yoda and uh, maybe you can play it extra. But in any case, this is great. This is absolutely amazing. I I might include it inside CC actually when I think about it. If, it will, if this was legendary, that would be even more amazing. It is not have an untapped legendary creature you control. But yeah, I might include it. Maybe you might. Alright, so we have lots of really bad cards. Here we have Cleric Tribal. 
think Cleric Tribe is pretty cool, but not that great. And here we have a card I've actually already looked at. It was spoiled to me. Uh, Ertai Resurrected. This guy is amazing. He has uh, lore-wise amazing. I really like Ertai. He is the, here's the original Ertai. He uh, was a good guy, but then he was actually part of the Weatherlight. He was a member of the Weatherlight. He was a good guy and all of that stuff. And then he became evil. He was corrupted by Phyrexia and altered by Phyrexia science, corrupted by Black Maggot, twisted by Reg. Ertai still looked in the mirror and saw only glory. Beautiful. And now he's back. He's been resurrected. He's very old, by the way. He ran around together with Cisse back in the days. And he's amazing. When Ertai resurrected enters the battlefield, shoots up to one counter target spell, activated ability or triggered ability, a controller draws a card or destroy target creature or planeswalker, its controller draws a card. So Venser, Shaper, Savant have been a card for Cisse now and then because it's a solution in instant speed for Cisse with bounce effect. This is better. This is the trick Cisse has been looking for to perfectly deal with a fastest oracle or basically anything. If Cisse is a 5-5 and you have this in the deck, she can deal with everything. And that's great. Already though, if Cisse is like a 4-4, she can mostly deal with anything anyways. So I, I don't... There's also a problem worth to mention here with Cisse is that she has to be a 5-5 to be able to find this. And when she's a 5-5, you're already winning the game. So it's like, why is this in there? But honestly, there are situations where you're not really winning the game and you like desperately need Airtie to just solve the problem. Also, it has flash, so you can obviously, obviously it has flash, but you can cast it from your hand. It's very expensive, like four mana. The only reason why this is like amazing is because of Cisse, in my opinion, and I guess Yoda as well, because Yoda could have this inside his hand and just cast it, and that's great. That would be good counterspell magic for Yoda, something he really needs, and still have the huge legendary count inside the deck as well. Where opponent controller draws a card, I don't really care about that at all because the importance, like CC and Yoda will play counter spells to dictate and make sure specific key things don't happen. So if that player draws another card, that's not really gonna matter because they only care about a few cards inside those decks. So it's fine. Also, by the way, you can kill someone with a uh, fast oracle with this. So I absolutely love it. And uh, Besides Cisse though, and besides Yoda, more C I think this is more of a Cisse card. I don't think Yoda will always include this. I think Cisse will auto include Ertai Resurrected though, because she can tutor for it from the command uh, from the library. But besides that, I don't actually see Ertai seeing that much play. I mean, it's a very expensive counter spell that draws a card from an opponent. It's a free one, but like a free one, who cares? However, it's. There are just better options for other decks that want to have counter spells in them. But CZ is amazing. I, I have a feeling the entire CZ Discord is like jumping. When I saw this, like I have already seen this before, I was like very happy. Like I was uh, shouting a little bit. Most of the cards I'm looking through here are first time view, but this one I've seen, and I I gotta say this this is gonna this is just gonna help CZ so much. But moving on, lots of very bad. The, no, I shouldn't say bad cards, they are good for other formats, but for CDH, most of this is not that great. And that's it! Those were all the cards. Oh sure, we have this something uh, that is uh, not that great, but regardless, that was the entire set. And as a finalized uh, overview, something I've talked about before, and I think I made a video saying that CZ is the best commander in the entire game, this set have really helped. CC and the legendary stack strategy as well. There is honestly a lot of really good CDH cards here. Usually sets contain like four to five cards that are CDH great. This set contains a ton and it, I think it will help out a lot of very fringe CDH decks but also make new great ones. I still think that the best card inside the entire set is the red card, trying to find it. The one we talked about in the beginning of this video, Keldon Flame Sage. I think that card is absolutely amazing. But there are, there are lots of really cool things to be excited about. I'm excited about Ramses, Assassin Lord. I'm actually kind of into this one as well. 
I've actually played a game against it, and I can see it actually getting somewhere. And there are lots of really like small good, like Joyra Ageless Inventor. I talked about that one before, not gonna talk about it again, but yeah, I can I can see her work too. Going back to Jenson, this guy Druid Exile. Uh, so I said something about him in the beginning of the in, in not in the beginning, but in part one review that he doesn't have really have the cards to be complete because he's looking for various things. I I still don't think he's that great. Some people have been mentioning like him and Lurus. He's actually enabling Lurus to be a five color Lurus deck, and that's that's honestly fine. That's like good. However, Lurus is actually six mana. You pay three put him into your hand, and then you pay three more to cost him. Sure, you can pay them in separate six sections, but still that's rather expensive. It's like a five color Muldrotta. However, Muldrotta can be recast from the command zone if Muldrotta is killed. So, I don't know. I can see it work and do some cute things, but honestly, I think Lurus is a little bit overrated here. The part where you pay three mana to put the card into your hand is an extremely big nerf. CDH is very cutthroat, it's very close, very down to mana. Like, mana is a uh, luxury. Or well, you have fast, but you wanna shrink your mana cost as much as possible. And paying 6 mana for a Lurus is, is expensive. Especially considering the effect isn't that over the top. It's good effect, but it's not game-breaking effect, I think. As an overall review for this set, I think this set is absolutely amazing. There are lots of cool cards to include for your decks here. And honestly, lots of really interesting commanders, like I could see this one being a commander. Regardless, that was the Minaria United complete set review from part 1, part 2 to this part 3. Hope you liked it. A little bit of a longer video compared to what I normally do. But more deck techs. Actually, I think I'm gonna have to do a lot of deck techs because they are so many many different viable things here in any case thank you so much for watching and have a great day see you next time with more deck techs in the future take care guys